everyone. Welcome to Painting Crafty. If you're new here, I'm Melanie, and I'm glad you're joining me. And for my returning art and crafty friends, I'm so glad you're taking another art break with me today. Today, I have a tutorial with watercolor and a little bit of drawing, and I'll walk you step by step through these easy to follow directions so you too can create this. It looks a little complicated, but really it's a wet on wet technique. So the color, the watercolor is going to do the work for you. Today's tutorial is also a part of a YouTube collaboration. We have two hosts today. We have Brenda with Rustic and Lace DIY and Krista, The Crafty Life. You're going to find the links to the in the side my description box for their channels, as well as the whole playlist. You're definitely going to want to take a little bit of time, jump on and see what the, all the other collaborators are contributing today. And I'm sure you'll be in, um, inspired to create with some leaves. Well, let's go ahead and start with the drawing part first. For those of you who like to have a little bit of help in drawing, I do have a Kofi page, which is rather like a Patreon page. That's where I host my subscription for all of my line drawings that I do on my YouTube channel. So just pop on over there, see what I have to offer. It's very reasonably priced and easy to join. And I like having a reference too when I do a drawing, so I include a picture of the one I painted as well. So again, pop on over to my Kofi page and see what I have to offer. Well, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the drawing parts and a little bit about mixing some color for watercolor. To do the drawing, it's just simple little leaves. I've got um, Three different styles here is what I'm going to be showing you and the first style I call my football leaf because there's a point and a belly in the middle and a tip at the end it's shaped like a football that's why I call it my football leaf and when I start with these drawings I usually do clusters of leaves so I'm going to let's put me let's change this up a little bit let's change it there we go um, and let's maybe even so what to do this can't decide how I want my picture to be today. Well, we'll leave it this way. <laughs> I'm going to start with a simple little sideways line here and just a curl around. That's going to give me an idea of where I want to build my um, structure of leaves. I'm going to start here at the tip here, make my football structure so I'm coming out and coming in. So it's very much that football shape. And I'm going to come this direction. Normally when you build this leaf type pattern, it's nice to have your leaves all kind of going some different directions. That will really add some interest if they're going different directions. Now I'm going to pop in a few more of these down here, maybe down in the lower. And it looks nice to be able to actually cross some over. If you look at this one, I have this one behind, this one's way back there, and then I have two that are more in the in the foreground. So it's nice to be able to add a little bit of dimension that way by crossing them over. And some of these you don't even have to um, draw. If you want to just pop them in with some paint, you could easily do that. Well, that's a good start there. Now I have this other little simple leaf here. It's uh, one that starts in the tip at the point there would be a tip of the leaf there and then it just varies side to side ones that are on matching ones off to each side i'm going to put those in as fillers and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to basically put my little stems in and then i'll just build off my um, watercolor as i'm going so that'll just give me an idea of where i want to lay them in. I'm going to be including some berries in there and then this little bit of kind of a Queen Anne style lace but just adding a little bit of color and I'm going to be adding the berries and then some bigger leaves down at the bottom. So these leaves are very simple. They're just a longer skinny leaf. This is just all made up, nothing exact. I'm going to put this one behind it here and the way basically I'm just putting these in is to fill up my space and to anchor my picture. So I'll have these ones as the bottom part. They're not a big part of my painting, so I'm just going to add those in there just to keep a place. Now this is a wet on wet style, so I'm going to take some clean water and I'm going to go ahead and add that into these big leaf areas. Watercolor is, has this unique property that it will stay where the water is and it won't go into the dry areas. It always wants to move where the paper is wet. So I'm applying this water. I'm wanting to get my paper shiny without having a large puddle in there. Now once I have that done, I have some colors that are mixed over here and I've created just a tone, a palette that has some fall-ish like colors and I'm going to just drop 
and pop these colors in. This is where we get to be a little bit, um, have our own little artistic license of how we want these. And I'm gonna put this on there and wherever that water is, that color is going to flow into and create its own little watercolor motion. I like to call it watercolor magic actually. And I'm going to just dot this in here. Now you do wanna take into consideration a little bit about if I add the gold to my purple, because they are complementary colors, they are going to create brown. But in this case, it's fine because it is um, kind of a fallish leaf. I'm gonna do this one in a little bit of orange. My idea is not to necessarily cover them all up. I can have some open spaces. I can actually tip my paper and even blend some of that color together. And that color will follow wherever the water is. So it's going to stay inside of my leaf shapes and not really go past there. So I'm gonna sit and let that do its own little work. Now, if your puddles are too big, you can come in with a dry brush and you can lift some of your color as well. If you would like to pick some of that color up, you can. And I might want to spread this color out just a little bit. So I'm gonna lift some of that color out. It's kind of a fun look. Okay, so we're gonna let that set. Let's pop down and do these ones down here. So I'm gonna add, whoops, I got some water going everywhere. I'm gonna add some clean water here somewhat clean. I've been working in this little um, pod. Usually with watercolor, you want to have a clean side and one side that you wash your brush out in to try to keep a clean bit of water. But I've been working with both of them and I probably kind of dirtied my water up more than what I should. I'm going to put in a little bit of this blue. It's a Payne's blue, so it's got some gray in there. And then let's pop in a little bit more of this purple here and see what we get add a little bit of this red color. Ooh, I like that. I'm going to add a little bit of this um, orange. Now, if I add the orange next to the blue, I'm going to get a little bit more of a brown because the orange and the blue are complementary colors and they will mix together <laughs> and create a shade of brown. But I'm okay with that in this instance. For those who might not know, if you um, this is this is a color wheel, but it's kind of a special color wheel, but it'll still work my purposes. When um, you're talking about complementary colors, you're talking about colors that are across the color wheel. So blue and orange, those are complementary colors. If I want to tone my blue down and not make it as bright, I can add a little bit of orange to it and vice versa to be able to tone my colors down. The green and the reds, they are complementary colors. So I can tone my reds down just a little bit, less of the saturation, a brighter, bolder red. If I added a little bit of green, I can tone it down. And the purple and the yellows, those are the complementary colors. And again, if you mix them together, you can tone or turn the saturation down, or you can also make a shade of brown <laughs> as well. But look at how pretty these are. Now, if I get, I kind of went over my line here, I'm just gonna take some, somewhat cleanish water here. And I'm gonna tickle that edge and I can lift a little bit of my color there. But in the grand scale of things, it's fine. I can just use this. I don't have to worry about it too much. All right, there we go. Now let's work a little bit on those smaller leaves. And I'm gonna start with clear water as well. And I'm going to put my tip of my first one up here. And you're probably not gonna be able to see it too well while it's wet because I don't have a lot of color here, but you'll see it in just a minute. Now, if my leaves are wet, that color, if once I touch it, it will go into that area. So I need to be aware of that. If I'm not okay with those colors mixing together, I'm going to want to make sure my area is dry before I were to touch it. But I'm okay with this area being a little bit of touching that color. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown too, and I'm going to just tap that in there just a light bit. I'm gonna keep these leaves a little bit lighter than what my other ones were. You know what, there was a step I wanted to show you and I wanted to do before this dries. I forgot to add the step. I'm gonna take a pencil and I'm going to go ahead and scratch in the vein work. And actually by doing this, I'm damaging the paper. I'm going in and creating these grooves into my paper. But what I'm also doing is allowing that color to seep down deeply 
into that grooved paper and I'm creating a little bit of a line work just by doing that. I love the way this looks and I love this technique of doing it. It works perfect for creating these leaves. So I'm not adding any more color. I'm just taking my pencil and doing that. I'm gonna do the same thing to these backgrounds a little bit here of these little ones I just added. And you can see how that color is going to sink down into those crevices. It's a great look. I love how it really does bring an emphasis to those without doing a lot of extra work. All right, let's continue on with um, those other little flowers, or not flowers, I'm thinking flowers because that's what's up next, but these are the leaf areas. I'm gonna go ahead and add some off to the side here. I can do a few of these at the same time so I don't have to keep on um, bringing my um, brush back in and out. I think I'm gonna put a third one here, I have deadly, and I'm just wetting that area, picking my blue up, tapping in that area again. So you, you can see how they're just off to the side and you can go fast. Sometimes the faster you go with this, the more loose it's going to be. I do enjoy painting loosely as what I'm usually shooting for. I like my work to be loose and not necessarily so um, contrived the line work. So I'm always shooting for that. So for me, it's um, I like the line work and I like having that real informal look. Okay, so let's go ahead, take my pencil again, come into those areas, and you can even scribble. You don't even have to do exact lines. I love to scribble. Those who follow along on my channel know I love to scribble, <laughs> and anytime I can find an opportunity to, just to add a little bit of loose quality to my paintings, I definitely will to add a little bit of scribbling. Now watercolor is going to dry lighter. It's just the opposite of what acrylic paint is. So when this dries, if I decide I would like to add more um, coloration, I can. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this green and tap in some of these back areas here. And I'll probably add a little bit of brown to this too because I've been um, mixing some of my other colors and maybe even a little blue, that might look pretty. Let's cool it down. Those colors up above are a little bit more warm. Let's add a little bit of coolness to it and see what we end up with. Okay, and then um, let's put a few little berries into this picture. So I'm gonna take some of that water again, that clear water, and I'm going to, oh, this is probably, oh no, it's dry here. I'm gonna put in some round circles of water. I'm not trying for large puddles but I'm looking to create um, some little dots. Now I might've gotten too much water over here. I can come in and pick a little bit of that up with my brush, with like a clean brush, and pick that up if I need to, to raise or lift some of the color. And we'll let that dry and see what happens. There we go. Now well, let's work back down here. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of red. I had a brighter uh, red color and I had put a little bit of green into it just to desaturate my color a little bit to come up with more of a burgundy color, more of that wine burgundy color. Let's take a little bit of purple and hit that in there as well. Oh, I'm getting a little bit too much purple. <laughs> I'm going to rinse my brush out, give it a squeeze because I take up some of my water and I can come in and absorb some of that color if I need to so I can pick it up and have a little bit of chance to start over. I wanna bring my red back in. I lost too much of my red. I want just a little bit more red. I can still keep some of that purple, which I wanted, but I'm going to work, focus a little bit more on the red. Now let's try if I can't pick up a little bit of that purple and see if I can't do this again. <laughs> let's try, let's do a little bit here and there. Okay, now what I can do is clean out my brush, give it a squeeze. I can come into the centers here, pick it a little bit up, and then make another round circle off to the side. And these are going to be lighter, which is going to give it a look of like they are behind the, the other ones. The brighter ones are going to look like they're in the foreground, and these lighter ones are gonna look like it's in the background. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take my pencil, drag it through the middle this time, bring it down to a center point here 
Like these are the little branches that are connecting my berries. And it's going to accomplish some of the same type of look that I got with um, my leaves by dragging it through the center of those berries. A fun look. I can decide too, maybe I would like to add a little bit of line work on these ones. Perhaps they get lines all the way through. And again, these are just made up leaves. Yeah, I kind of like that look where I added a little bit of texture to my leaves that way. Great. All right, let's add a few more berries. So I'm going to come in again, add some little dots of water. Let's see, I'm thinking I'm gonna put it some here, making sure, and then maybe bring some out to this side. So you're looking for some open areas in your work and filling them up as you go. So let's pop that in there. This is that red. It's okay if you go over some of your other things. Okay, let's bring out a little bit of that purple. It's that gentle touch. Okay, let's do there. Okay, let's pick up a little bit of that color. So I'm gonna give my um, paintbrush a squeeze, come into the center, and then just lightly pick up some of that other color. I'm, by doing it this way, I'm kind of lightening my berry that I did put down and then giving it another bits of contrast behind. Maybe I'll tap a little bit more into these because I do want to be able to pull that stem through to get that look. Okay, so I'm going to take my pencil again and let's drag it through and kind of make a cluster of berries. I like that look. I think that looks good. I like it. I like it. I like it. Now I have an open area here. I'm going to need to decide what I want to do something with that area. I could um, simply just put in another leaf, which I could do. Come in here and go a little bit in that way. Maybe there's not a lot of line work there. But I need to fill in that space. And I'm going to fill in this space too. Since I have this out, let's just do another leaf here. I like that look and okay let's leave it like that maybe pick up a little bit of that red and tap that in there too just to add to that color Ooh, I'm liking that as well that looks great now I did add a little bit of that blue lacy flower in the back I need to decide maybe I do want to add some line work here to this flower so I'm going to scrape back into my paper do that damage again, but it's a beautiful damage. <laughs> a sent off and you get to damage your paper and be happy about it, right? Well, this, I think that looks good. Let's go ahead and add a few of those little um, blue flowers in there. Those kind of the Queen Anne's lace. Now the look for this is trying to keep a little bit of an open flower so it's not so closed up. If you can manage to do that, I'm going to be um, tapping in these little bits of my flower here and there. So I'm just doing these little marks. There's not much to it. Um, it's not a, like a true petal or anything. I just want to make sure I do leave a little bit of open area so it's not all closed. So I take a look at my camera where it makes might make sense to add another one. Let's put some over here this time. Maybe there's some that are going out this way. We'll fill up my paper over here something a little different. I'm gonna come here on this side, add a little bit on this side as well, this little background. These paintings don't take very long to do, so uh, it's great to do these multiple times and build them up and try and see what you like and just practice blending your colors and even coloring, coming up with color combinations. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take my pencil and this time I'm going to be like coming, like bees that will be coming in. So like the pod is, is coming into the center. So I'm gonna be following that direction. Let's see, coming this way maybe. About, let's come this way. That looks good. And then in this area where I put those little stem-like areas, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my green and I'm gonna tap a little bit of green next to that, those little center areas I just put in. 
And that should kind of go down into that areas, but also spread out because that color is still wet. That looks good. I like that. That looks good. I can't decide if I'm happy with it or not, or if I really like, I need to add a few more steps to this. So let's go ahead and get my pen out. I like to use, you know what? I think I want to do a little bit more. It's kind of, I'm building as I'm going. <laughs> I'm going to take a little bit of a darker brown color. I'm making kind of a nice little puddle in my, and I'm going to do a little sprinkle spraddle. So I'm going to take this and hopefully it's kind of like a sepia tone. It'll fill up some of my space. I'm going to take a little bit of clean water and sprinkle that too so it spreads out. If your paper is dry behind there when you do this look, your spots will stay more spotty. If it's wet, it's going to spread out and have a completely different look. Now, if you get too carried away, and I might have got a little carried away with mine, I can come in and give it a tap and spread out my color a little bit like so but i'm liking that i oh, i always kind of like a little bit of sprinkle sprinkle let's go ahead and take a little bit of pen work i'm going to take a zero one micron pen now my paper isn't quite dry i'll give this a dry let's give this a dry now that it's dry and watercolor always dries a little bit lighter than what um it is when it's wet. I want to boost some of these colors up because they all really look very similar to the same color. So I want to have some contrast. So I need to add contrast by adding a little bit more deep color. So I'm going to come in and just add some little darker colors and add a little bit more contrast to my painting. Adding contrast to your paintings is one of the best things you can do. As you can see, as I'm adding my layers, it really is coming to life. I'd like to say an extra special thank you to Brenda and Krista for hosting today's collaboration. Make sure you check out their channels inside of the description box, as well as the rest of the playlist. I'm sure you're going to be inspired to create something. The frame I'm going to be putting this in is a frame that I gave a tutorial for on my channel. It's an easy one that I used a Dollar General Store frame to create it. I'll have the link to that video inside of the description box. So let's go ahead and take a final look of what it looks like all together. Let me know in the comments if you've done watercolor or if you're new to it. If you like doing art and doing other types of creative things, come over to my channel. I do weekly tutorials and I'd love to have more creative friends join me. Give me a thumbs up if you think you might give this a try. Hopefully you'll come back and see me again and next time you'll bring your art things and you'll join in with the art fun.